Hi again, welcome to my channel. Today, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you guys how I polish my heat brakes, what I did to get this thing perfectly smooth. Um, I recently de destroyed one of my hot ends after about 200 hours, the heat brake in there, the thread, I guess I galled it up trying to clean it up, so on and so forth, and it just wasn't holding right anymore, and I destroyed a heater block as well. But since I bought two of these, um, I figured I'd show you guys what I've done to actually get a stable, properly functional heat brake. This is what it actually comes with. Normally there's a Teflon tubing in here that, which I've lost and that's about 3 mil worth of hole size and around 1.75 uh, mil um, <coughs> filament through a Bowden. Now, with that being said, the heat brakes that I bought look like this. Notice the difference? So if I screw this one into the block, it basically stops and reaches out way farther than it should. And I don't want it to reach that far because, well, I'll create a melt zone that's way too long even though there's a sharp cutoff. So what I did was I took this used it as a template towards the back of it marked it out with tape and then uh, mounted it on my drill and what I did was I turned it with a file just simply holding the file back and forth while spinning it yes it's stainless yes it will <coughs> excuse me uh, yes it will eat at your file as well but eventually you'll get to the point where this is machined for far down enough to actually screw all the way in right so once you screw this thing all the way in you'll get that that's what it's supposed to look like and that's that's what I've done here being that my old heat brake was basically galvanized shut into my old uh, heat sink, I just pulled out the other hot end that I bought as a spare and I'm reworking that one. Uh, the next th step up, and this one I'm borrowing from my uh, other hot end, borrowing, basically repurposing it. What this is, this is a piece of aluminum slug that I mounted again on the drill one of these cheapy drills and turned it down far enough so it actually fits inside of the compression fitting I actually like these fittings but the problem is it still leaves a bunch of space here where the filament can kink up especially if it's flexible filament it'll kink up in there and that's the end of it uh, with that said what I did was first I turned it down like so then I mounted it here like so give it a good tightening and I ran a two millimeter drill bit from this side all the way through and yes it requires somewhat of a long drill bit if you're careful you can put a piece of uh, tubing here guide a two millimeter drill bit all the way through so the whole point of it is so it actually takes up the slack there's no place for it to kink up and the reason why I'm doing this modification to the heat break is so it snugs in all the way and there's no place for the filament to get kink up over there the next thing that I did was I actually used one of these conical burr bits and basically what that allows me to do is, if I actually had this thing plugged in, is deburr the hole there. Next up, I'm going to show you how to polish the uh, heat brake itself so you don't get any jams or anything like that. And it's actually, this method is quite simple, a lot better than my toothpaste method and drill bit method and so on and so forth. But you'll have to see it in a second. Here is the method that I was talking about. What you see here is a 1.7 millimeter drill bit, roughly, which the hole needs to be about 2 millimeters. 1.9, 2 millimeters is where you want to be. 
and what I did was I took basically a scouring pad from the kitchen you can do this with a, any sort of stainless uh, scrubbing pads removed a few hairs from it and uh, you insert it into a drill bit work it in there and um, basically spin it until it polishes all the way through I'm going to be showing you how to do that in a second here's the main proponent of this this is just a few strands pulled off from a scotch bright pad whatever you want to look into uh, I'm interested in the stainless portion of it I twist it up into basically a wire and I run it inside of the flutes of the drill bit and that basically gives me enough to be able to polish that heat break without going nuts so with the drill bit and I would recommend actually using something that's roughly high speed not just a drill uh, Dremel tool rotary tool of some sort is probably best because the RPMs will do a better job at polishing higher RPMs will do a better job at polishing this than anything else so with that said does this even fit eh, I gotta change the chuck I'll show you in a minute okay before the camera battery runs out I am gonna feed this in here as deep as it'll go because the thing about the stainless is it'll bunch up in there and simply put it'll polish the living hell out of that stainless heat break it really does a great job I was surprised that it actually worked it does disintegrate while it's doing it so you want to blow through this thing occasionally take another chunk of this wire strand it up like you're twisting it for as a chunk of wire and uh, run it into the flute of the drill bit if you do it right you should be able to run it into the flute backwards as well so you get both ends of the flute polishing like so I'm going to remove the top chunk and let's try to insert this in the, this thing in there the lighting is not so great here so pardon that uh, where I normally shoot videos is it's quite a mess I have like every tool out because I had to dig this uh, hot end out of storage basically and uh, since I live in a one bedroom apartment As you can tell, you don't need much more than this. Done. If you look inside, the heat break will be basically almost mirror shine. I'm going to make sure that it's clear. And, uh, then assemb uh, assemble your hot end. That's my method of polishing these heat breaks and getting these to actually perform well.